Welcome to this month's episode of Short Clip Case Studies, brought to you by Natera Performance Solutions. Hi everyone, my name is Chris Gavilio, and today I'd like to take you through a short little case study presentation on how I use blood flow restriction to help manage patellar tendonitis. Personally, I've been using BFR for over 10 years now, and I've seen an explosion of the multiple uses for this type of training. This case study won't be going through any mechanisms or deep explanations, so please feel free to contact me for more information. The athlete that I'd like to talk about is an elite male decathlete. The year prior to this, as a 17-year-old, he was still at high school. In my work setting, I'd only see him periodically due to his school commitments. Therefore, although we would class him as an elite athlete, his training age in the gym setting was quite low at around one year. The time period was 14 weeks leading into the World Junior Championships in the under 20 age group. He had an ongoing patella tendon issue that was limiting his ability to take off in the jumping events and was painful during his strength sessions. Up to this time period, his patella was somewhat manageable, but got to the stage where a more concentrated structure was required. If we look at the main team that was involved, it was an integrated approach with the three main players being the technical coach, the physiotherapist and myself as a strength coach. I'm fortunate to work on site with the physio and to see the coach multiple times a week. From the technical development, it was decided to change his takeoff leg to his right foot, which was quite amazing given the short turnaround time. This was decided due to his ability to perform the jumping events to a reasonable level in training. And more importantly, that if he was able to continue jumping off his left foot, he probably would not be able to complete a full decathlon. If we now shift our focus quickly onto the management of tendonitis and how I could directly assist with the athlete's management during this period, the inclusion of isometric and heavy load resistant exercises come to mind. And researchers indicated that incorporating these contraction types yield the best results. As a simple overview, we broke the 14 week period into three phases. Phase one and two were completed in Australia prior to leaving for the competitions overseas leading into the major championships. What I'm now going to do is take you through an overview of phase one and two, in particular the exercises, the sets and the rep ranges to give you an idea of what we did in relation to managing his patella. The first phase of the tendon management program was a more of a traditional six week strengthening program with no BFR. Why no BFR? Well, there was two reasons why I didn't include it. The first was more of a personal reason and it was actually due to a preconceived idea that all I do is use BFR at any opportunity I have to train an athlete. The second reason was that at the time, a lot of practitioners weren't using BFR for the management of tendonitis, but rather incorporating the more traditional model of isometrics using both long duration and heavy loads, as well as heavy load lifting in general. Therefore, we decided as a team, we would utilize this more traditional loading model. As an overview, each strength session would start with the patella tendon specific exercises. The first included leg extension holds. The second exercise was a glute med wall single leg squat hold. The inclusion of this aside from the isometric component was also due to an identified weakness in his glutes, hence the physio included this exercise. The last exercise was a wall set, which was a long duration hold. Although these three exercises are quite simple, they are quite common and we would normally see these in the, for the treatment of patella tendonitis. Furthermore, it's also provided a thorough warm up leading into his main strength session. After he completed his patella specific exercises, he'd then move on to his lower body strength program. As an overview, and depending on the day of the week, I'd include a variation of different Olympic lift derivatives, squats, double leg, but also single leg. In particular with the single leg squat variations, we use the Smith machine a lot. I felt the positions he achieved were somewhat relevant to single leg stance and sprinting, and we could also control his body alignment, such as his hips. With these exercises, we included isometric holds and pushes as a means to assist with his tendonitis, but also with the performance aspect in mind, as it's also well known of the performance benefits of isometric training. Single leg press at range also seemed to be an exercise that the athlete felt worked well for him, so we kept that in. Aside from that, ancillary lower body exercises that focus on the calf and Achilles complex, as well as a hamstring were also included. With respect to outcomes, 
we use the single leg decline squat as one of our practical tests. During and after the six weeks of phase one, he felt that there was no improvement in his pain scores and he was also unable to achieve full range of movement. With respect to gym-based exercises, he still experienced pain on most squat-based movements. He was able to tolerate the exercises okay, but this was at the expense of the ability to increase the loads he could lift and also the range of movements that we would prefer to see. At this point, I really felt that something wasn't working, especially if he is still experiencing pain and not achieving good range of movement on his exercises. Therefore, with only another six weeks of training before departing for Europe, we need to decide what to do. And at this stage, this is where blood flow restriction made its debut. The concept of BFR originated out of Japan in the 1960s and is called Katsu. In today's vernacular, it's also been called other names such as ischemic training and occlusion training. The BFR cuffs are placed on either the arms or the legs and inflated to a relative percent of arterial occlusion, where exercises are then performed. From a simplistic overview, the blood flows freely into the muscles, that's arterial blood flow, but you are restricting it coming back out, or in other words, you're restricting the venous return of blood from your muscles. The restriction of venous return of blood creates a localized hypoxic environment and a subsequent increase in metabolic stress. As a result, there are cascading positive effects from intramuscular and intracellular signaling pathways. As a result, the responses due to the increases in metabolic stress from training with BFR are similar to that of high load lifting. Perhaps the most commonly known positive effect of BFR training is that when combined with low load resistance exercise, such as 20% of 1RM, it has been shown to increase muscle strength and hypertrophy similar to that of high load lifting. Another lesser known positive effect of BFR use is that in conjunction with exercise, it's been shown to improve pain levels both acutely and up to 48 hours later. Therefore, it was time. Time to introduce BFR. And as with all training interventions, there's responders and non-responders. However, I thought it was time to see how BFR would work with this athlete. Also, when you look at literature, there isn't a lot of information with elite athletes, as most of the research has been done with physically active people only. However, it was worth a go. I still remember the first time we used BFR. It was the single leg squat. He started training without it, and again he experienced pain and stopped mid-set. So, after taking our measurements, he used the cuff, and on the next set, he found there was a slight decrease in knee pain from a six to a four out of a 10. And then onto the second set, he dropped to a two out of 10 pain score. In reflection with my discussion with the athlete, this too was rather reflective of the difficulty from the exercise with the addition of BFR as opposed to knee pain itself. What a great result. From this point, it was a reasonably straightforward training methodology. The saurus integrate BFR into key exercises. The patella tendon exercises stayed the same with very similar isometric holding times. With respect to strength-based movements, BFR integrated well into these exercises that had a knee or quadricep focus. As tolerated, we pushed the loadings above the typical 20 to 30 percent 1RM to whatever he could tolerate. Aside from one BFR study that used squat loads of 70 percent 1RM, there's not a lot of research that's focused on these higher load parameters using BFR. However, as he was performance focused, the ability to lift high loads pain free was still key. Similar to phase one, other key exercises that we would expect to see in a performance-based strength program were also included. These included Olympic lifts, but also we ensured that there were variations that trained the calf, ankle, and also as well as the hamstring from the knee and the hip. The outcomes of this phase? Well, perhaps the best outcome that he was able to train and exercise pain-free. Longitudinally, what were the changes that we saw? He comfortably improved his training squat sets from 70 to 110 kilos. Due to how close we were to his major competition and his low training age, we didn't test for 1RM as we didn't think it was worth the risk and also considering his already high training loads on the track. On the force plate, we monitored contact times using a single leg pogo test. Although he wasn't as good as his non-affected right side, we did see an improvement in both contact time which was also seen in improvement in its relative height. 
we not only use the Smith machine single leg ISO push as a training exercise, but we use this as a test. We found that using isometric measures was a much easier way to monitor changes in his muscle potential. Not only was the test quicker and easier than a traditional 1RM test, we could monitor the difference in left versus right, as well as the position is much more specific to the athlete's sport. This was great motivation as the athlete could relate to this position of the test to their sport and also see the direct improvements in his left leg. Back to the single leg decline squat, he could now complete it full range of movement with very little to no pain. With respect to his training, he was reasonably pain free. However, due to the nature of his high training loads, he did experience pain from time to time, but this typically settled quickly. Further to this, I also got him to use BFR in simple movements, such as low range of movement squats, around training sessions as a simple way to decrease pain. And with everything, the ultimate proof of the program is transfer to performance. Winning in a championships record, it was a great performance overall for Ash. In hindsight, had I wished I introduced BFR earlier for Ash? Of course, but if I did, I wouldn't have had this little case study to share with you all. I hope you enjoyed it and see its potential as a tool for your own athletes. Thank you for your time.